When you stay in a hotel, do you really look into the design of the elements it has in the hotel? As for me, beside the comfort, beside the service, beside the hospitality they have in the hotel, I will have to look into the little little things they do in the hotel itself. Welcome to Danny on the Go Special Season 2. I'm Danny. In this video, I'm going to show you this place where I'm going to stay here where they're going to use it as a very homely stay. Yes, I'm at Ruma Hotel and Residences in Kuala Lumpur. This hotel actually using the name Ruma is just because it's a Malay word that depicts home in English. And we'll see how homely this 5-star hotel be. Stay tuned and I'm going to give my full review of this place that I'm going to stay. The Ruma Hotel and Residence, or I will shorten it as Ruma Hotel, was opened in 2018. It's operated by the Hong Kong-based operator called Urban Resort Concepts, where the signature hotel they are operating is the well-known Shanghai Puli Hotel and Spa. The hotel has been awarded with these awards in just half of the year of 2024. It should have some uniqueness that stands out from other rivals. I'm going to stay in a deluxe room for one night and if you want to know how much I pay for the room, you may check on the description below. I'm going to have this hotel video review made into two parts and it has quite a number of interesting places to talk about. So please subscribe my channel so you will not miss any of my videos especially the part 2 of this hotel review which I'm going to post in a week later. Thank you for doing so as it means a lot to me for having my channel to get monetized. Now let's jump into the content. Nestled in the heart of Kuala Lumpur, with other well-known hotels around the area, the location is so strategic where it's just 10 minutes walk to KLCC Twin Tower and 2 minutes walk to the shopping heaven of KL Pavilion. The hotel is part of the building that consists 253 guest rooms and suites from level 7 to 18 while level 19 onwards to level 37 are the residences. This is a rough diagram on how the building layout looks like. On the basement are the car parks which consist of three levels. Ground floor is the lobby, the bar and the lounge. The mezzanine floor is the all-day dining restaurant and a meeting room. Level 2 to 5 are the parking for the residences. Level 6 consists the hotel facilities and boardrooms and spa. Level 7 to 18 are the hotel's rooms and suites. Level 19 is the residences facilities club. Level 20 onwards are the residence units. And on the top floor of level 37 is the observation deck for the residences. Guests can come to this hotel by car like me where the parking is complimentary at the basement or one can just come by taking a cab where we'll enter at the main entrance. Upon entering into the lobby, one will pass by a cage light foyer with a bronze made fountain in the middle. With the yellow and brownish lighting as the backdrop, it gives a very bold yet elegant touch into it. The cage concept at the entrance depicts bird's home, but to me, why do they need to cage the guest? While the bronze fountain brings a live meaning into it, where I find it makes sense to make the whole picture feel a little lively when one comes in from outside. In the lobby, one will not miss this Kabaya mannequin, a traditional Malay wear for women, designed by the famous Malaysian fashion designer Bernard Chandran, in the middle with two dark brown metal spiral staircase which leads to the mezzanine floor. On the left is the reception area where one can have the check-in done. And on the right is the 7 bar. The hotel staff is very polite to come to my seating to have the check-in process done while there is a welcome drink served too. The whole concept of the hotel, 
As the name of the hotel stated, Ruma is to bring homely, personal and intimate touch to the guest, making sure guests will feel its home in the city. From the decorations to the lighting and the combination of colors they have, one will feel there is a sense of design that makes one feel comfortable while in this place. There is not much natural light inside the lobby, and mostly the lighting they are using are warm colors like yellow and orange. The ceiling of the entire lobby is covered with copper and gives a very rustic yet a little futuristic or modern look as it is shiny. As the lighting is the most important part to brighten up the lobby even though it's still dark here, beautiful wall lamp shades are placed everywhere to give a very welcoming feeling to the guests. There are many decorations related to Malaysian culture displayed here and there. Woven chairs are placed all over the lobby as though to make one feels like coming into the living room of a house. I just cannot wait to check out the spiral staircase. This beautiful dark spiral staircase will lead the guests to the mezzanine floor where the only dining restaurant called Atas is. And there is also a meeting room on the other end. After the check-in process, I started to go to check out my room. The leaf corridor is at the side of the reception area and to my surprise, they even have decorations of Malay arts and antiques like the cabinets display at each side. I was given the room at 14th floor. Upon coming out from the lift, more arts display at the side of the wall. Here, I can see the sample of batik print block which they use to print the batik fabric, a Malay traditional fabric. There is a bridge that links to the corridor of the rooms and the wall is designed with fluted wooden panels. This amazing design really impressed me. It also means that all rooms are quiet enough where it will be away from the lift. One just got to look down as the room number signs are located near the floor. Weird, but nicely placed as it can catch the eyes of the guests. The corridor is bright enough with some Japanese style design along the way. It makes me feel like I'm at a ryokan or a Japanese onsen hotel. The room's doorknob is stylishly designed as you can see here. And this is my room. Upon entering my room, I was greeted with the auto wind-up line at the window in front and it really feels so nice. This hotel room is only 43 square meters and it's not really big. But with this size, the designer of the room actually used their brain to think of the layout which actually surprised the guests and it did it surprised me because the layout of this room is actually very different from the traditional type as you can see we come in from um, the entrance itself and then straight away we will see the closet and then we have the bite and here we will have the uh, resting area where we have the couch and the window itself so the bathroom here is actually one third of the width of the room and the length is actually the whole entire room itself. So that means it's actually very big bathroom. The bathroom and the bed area is separated by a sliding door. Once the door is open, there is a vanity table facing right in front with two uniquely designed basin at the side. It's two, and not one, so that you and your partner can use this play at the same time. On the far left is the toilet area, brightly lit up with some display decorations at the side too. On the top, 
off the table, there are more display items like these two finely printed with traditional patterns plates that serves not only as decoration but as a reflective object for the lights too. Very nice touch. Meanwhile, on the far right is the wet area where the bathtub and shower are located. The shower comes with normal shower and rain shower fixture. Branded shower amenities are provided and attached on the wall and it no longer comes in bottle now. As usual, most of my videos I will actually show me myself sitting in the bathtub in one of the clips and so do this actually to see whether this bathtub is big enough for a 180 cm high person like me to sit on it. So this bathtub is actually very small where I can even actually have my leg put straight. Let's look at what they have in the vanity area. Inside the first drawer, there's a tissue box, a small towel and a power socket. Then in the middle drawers are all the necessity amenities that you used to have in the 5-star hotel. And in the third drawer, there is a hairdryer and another small towel. At the side of the bathtub is a window with blackout blind that can control with just a press of a button. Well, this place is so homely that they ha even have a fan here. Now, one was wondering and asked me, uh, is this room air conditioned? I will say, yes, of course it's air conditioned. This is just for display to make it means like really a home here. All control buttons are clearly stated at the side of the bed. Same as the bathtub area, the blackout blind is controllable with just a press of a button too. There are also power sockets including USB ports located on the wall beside the business table. I like this business table because this table is custom made in the room, in every room actually. So many people say that they don't like the tables because it's too high or too low, uh, they're just not comfortable sitting on it. But these tables is actually adjustable uh, according to the angle you want. Like in this case, I'm sitting here, I can have my dinner or meals here. Or if I want to do business, or even I can lay down here to watch TV on the other side there. Or if I want to do business where all the plugs are on the other side, I can actually have this table pull out and adjust it to the angle that I want. Or in this case, I would like to have it in this way and I can sit down here while all the plugs are at the side here, it's easier for me to do all the things on this table. Brilliant idea. My room is only at level 14, so there is not much view. In fact, the selling point of this hotel is not the view, but the design itself. It's very clever to divert the attention from the view as the hotel only has 18 floors. So if they tell you the room can see the KLCC Twin Tower, probably it's just the top portion of the building. My attention is paid on the design and the custom-made furniture and fixture in the room like what I see on those in the bathroom. I cannot stop admiring the lamp shades they have in the room, especially the bedside lamp. It's so oriental and beautiful as the light shines out, casting this shadow on the woven mat that designed as a bed headboard. The hotel do provides a little gift to all guests that come in for the first day. In my case, there's a small box of chocolate and a very warm welcome note from the hotel manager. Let's check out the closet area. 
The closet area is separated with a beautifully designed shoji wood panel. There is a luggage rack with a mirror behind and at the side is a full-length wardrobe. Inside the wardrobe are bathrobes and behind there is an iron and iron board. Beside are few compartments and few empty drawers for guests to store their things. The safe is custom made in one of the drawers and there are slippers at the lowest compartment. Beside the door is the mini bar. It has few bottles of mineral waters come in glass bottle, the Nespresso coffee making machine, a teapot and some local tidbits. Inside the drawers, there are plates with spoons and forks, glasses and ice buckets. On the other side of the drawers, there are various kinds of teas, sugars, creamers, packets, and also coffee capsule, cups, and also a kettle. Not to miss out are the canned drinks in the mini fridge that comes in complimentary where guests can drink without paying extra. Hey hi! So now this is the time for me to give a little bit of my impression for this place and room. Uh, I would say that most of my friends already stayed in this place before and probably I'm the only few last one that actually came to this place to give some reviews here. <laughs> uh, generally, I would say that the reason why I like to stay in this hotel is first of all, uh, it's a 5 star hotel with a less expensive price. So, and also it is located in Kuala Lumpur and the design is very nice. So that's the reason why they come to this hotel very often and most of them already came here before to experience staying in this hotel whether for staycation or business So for me, I think this hotel is very nice especially the room itself is actually have a wow factor to me uh, The layout, as I say, they actually put the effort to give a 43 liters and giving a very spacious uh, feeling to the guest itself whether it's from the bed, the couch and I like the most is the bathroom where they actually have a full length of bathroom and it actually implies a lot of natural lights inside here which is a plus point to all the guests here Okay, this hotel is not big to me it's a boutique 5 star hotel but as a boutique 5 star hotel I think it is, they actually did a very good job so um, they have three categories of rooms uh, generally so the first one is deluxe and grand room which is a room type which is where I'm, where I'm staying and the second one will be a studio type and the third one will be a suite so the studio and suite they also both come with uh, single room and double rooms so two rooms are those are meant for families bigger families okay here comes the tips for the hotel itself now if you're driving to the hotel like what I'm doing um, I think that uh, nowadays the hotel are very smart <laughs> They don't really accept touch and go Neither giving you any tickets They will actually scan your car plate number So the policy of the room, the hotel here is actually one room per car That means they're giving you a complimentary parking for one car for one room so if you come more than one car, probably the other car you got to pay and it's cashless um, So what happened is uh, you don't need to take anything upon coming into uh, the parking lot or parking bay uh, They will actually scan your car numbers And upon going out, you just need to go to the reception area And you just need to let them know your car plate number And they can validate for you, you can go out straight away I think this um, this happened in some of the shopping malls. They did it, but they but you have to pay it like uh, using the apps or whatever. Uh, then you don't need to wind out the window to you know pay or screen your whatever cards or the tickets. So in this way, it's more convenient. And in this way, also the, the hotel will not actually let more than one car coming into the hotel for one room guest. So it's a very smart way. 
So make sure if your friend is coming over to this hotel to come and see you and visit you, uh, you have no choice, you got to ask them to pay for themselves for the parking fee. Well, the hotel actually did impress me with a lot of things, whether the common area and the room. That doesn't mean that it's perfect all the way. To me, there are a lot of flaws, there are a lot of things that are really not good. Where I'm not going to say it now, I'm going to accumulate it and conclude it into my personal review on the part 2 where I'm going to say it afterwards. So in this part 1, I'm going to say it under here and hope you will follow me to the part 2. And in part 2, for a short preview that I will say here is uh, there will be facilities, there will be restaurants and also uh, you know, all the things that is not good, probably not good and also the good stuff that you can find in the rooms and hotels uh, common area itself. So please stay tuned and do subscribe my channel so that uh, it really give a good push to my channel to get monetized. And I hope you will help me on that. And I'll see you in part two. See you then. Bye.